All right, for this tips and rules segment. So this cycle introduces cards that take advantage of the action window in the refresh phase. So I wanted to make sure everyone knew exactly when you could trigger those actions. Like peace and thought. Exhaust two heroes to draw five cards. It's a refresh action. You do that at the end of the refresh phase after you've already readied all of your characters at the end of the round and raised your threat. The Imladra Stargazer has an action that lets you exhaust her, and then you can look at your top five cards of the deck and return them in any order. So you can exhaust her at the end of the round and rearrange your deck so you draw the card you want, but then she goes into the round exhausted because the readying has already happened. And then finally, Lore Aragorn. He has a refresh action to reset your threat. That happens after you've raised your threat. That's when you get a chance to drop your threat. So if you go into the refresh phase at 49 threat, you will lose because you will hit 50 before you have a chance to trigger his action. All right, let's get to the video. All right, let's go. Shadow and Flame. It's the final quest in the Dwarldolf cycle. It's an epic boss fight in the depths of Moria. We're going to start out with uh, nearing the gate. You're going to remove the dark pit from the encounter deck, set it aside. And then you're going to add Durin's Bane to the staging area and shuffle the deck. So Dark Pit, I am setting that out of play. That'll come into play later. And we're going to shuffle the encounter deck. And then we're going to take a look at Durin's Bane. You know, some people say this quest is really hard. And they struggle with it. I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, how bad could Durin's Bane actually be? I mean, it can't be that bad, right? All right, let's take a look at this guy. Oh, okay, yeah, he's horrible. Okay, so he's got a 1 engagement cost, 4 threat, 6 attack, 3 defense, and 27 health. Belrog, Flame, Shadow, Regenerate 3. So that means he will regenerate 3 health at the end of the round. Uh, he's indestructible. Players cannot play attachments on him. And then he can't leave the staging area, and he's considered to be engaged with each player whose threat is 1 or greater. And he attacks each of those players in turn during the combat phase, getting a shadow card each time. Well, that's horrible. So let, let's take a look at my, uh, my hero lineup before we get going into this quest. So I will be using Elrond, who came with this pack. He's incredibly powerful, as he should be. 13 threat, 3, 2, 3, 4. He's lore. Noldor, noble. You may spend resources from Elrond's resource pool to play allies of any sphere. And then when someone is healed, he does an extra point of healing. So very awesome. He is missing the healer trait, though. So, I mean, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Okay, uh, we're also going to play of Eowyn. So, you know, standards questing for four type thing, spirit. And then Prince Immerhill. I actually have a really cool alt art Prince Immerhill. I believe this was given by the Grey Company at Gen Con one year. So uh, really awesome alt art. So I'll be using that. He's 11 threat, 2, 3, 2, 4, Gondor Noble, leadership, response. After a character leaves play, ready, Prince Immerhill, limit, once per round. So uh, that's kind of a spoiler of what's going to be happening with this deck. I'm planning on a lot of characters leaving play. I mean, you saw the fire demon up in the staging area, right? All right, so I will be using tokens um, to keep track of my resources instead of my threat dial because I do have the... 2020 fellowship kit as you can see and since everything from that kit uses the art from this pack i thought it was super thematic to use the threat dial of the belrog art all right my starting threat is really high 33 so let's read 1b it's nine quest points when revealed reduce each player's threat to zero reveal x cards from the encounter deck where x is one less than the number of players in the game and add them to the staging area so this quest lets you drop your threat all the way back down to zero. So that's really, really awesome. Because you can start with any three heroes you want. It doesn't matter what your starting threat is. You get the benefit of having zero starting threat, which is excellent and freeing. Also, the Dwarl Delph cycle introduced a lot of secrecy cards. And they are pretty powerful. So as long as your threat's under 20, you get the secrecy benefit on the card. And so, yeah, starting at zero, that means you're probably going to be under 20 for the entire game. So in my opening hand here, I'm hoping to see Vilya, of course. Vilya is the ring that goes on Elrond, and it's amazing. And then I'm also hoping to see secrecy cards, uh, Imladra Stargazer, and other allies. And I'm just planning on chumping. Every time I get attacked by the Belrog, I'm planning on chumping it. Okay, so 
Master of the Forge, fantastic card. Let's you search the top five cards of your deck for an attachment and add it to your hand. That helps me find Vilya. There's a Stargazer, so I get to look at the top five cards of my deck and rearrange them. Uh, she's amazing. One of my favorite allies in the game. Hey, a secrecy card. Timely aid. So it only costs one, even though it says it costs four, because it has secrecy three. Reveal the top five cards of your deck, and then put an ally into play, then shuffle the other cards back into your deck. There's Steward. Uh, I got a nice cheap ally. And some card draw. Daron's Runes. Draw two cards, then discard one card from your hand. Uh, man, I've been really missing not having cards like Daron's Runes and Master of the Forge in my deck. So this is a really good uh, opening hand. I'm just missing Vilya, but between the Stargazer and Master of the Forge, I should be able to find it. So your number one strategy most likely is don't raise your threat on turn one. Get a free turn. Holy cow, that is an awesome draw. So my single copy of Unexpected Courage. That's great. All right, so I am going to play Stargazer. Remember, Elrond can pay for allies of any sphere. I'm going to exhaust Stargazer. I throw the thing on her in a minute. And that lets me look at my top five cards. And there's Vilya. Okay. So now I just got to put Vilya on top of my deck. So that's the card I draw. And now I'm going to rearrange my other cards. So if I make Faramir the next card. And then Timely Aid. So, you know, you you, you kind of do some sorting out. So, yeah. So if I draw Vilya next turn, I can Vilya in Faramir. I'll explain how Vilya works in a minute. And then the next round, I will draw Timely Aid. And you can just set up your next couple turns of card draw. So like I said, Stargazer should be exhausted. Uh, looking at my hand, I'm going to save my leadership resources so I can get Steward into play. There's me remembering to exhaust the Stargazer. And let's commit to the quest. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That should be good. I'm up against 4. I just don't want to raise my threat. I, if I have to raise my threat, I'm kind of screwed. Uh, okay, no problem. It's just a fiery sword that makes the Belrog even stronger. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of people, they always reveal that card that's a doomed one on turn one and get attacked by the Belrog. That sucks. That really does. I mean, that's almost a scoop where you just do an alternate universe where you just say, okay, let's pretend I revealed something else. All right, so I'm going to raise my threat. Going up to one. Everyone's going to get some money. And then, of course, I know what I'm drawing. It's Vilia. Okay, so I'm going to play Steward of Gondor on Elrond, since he can spend his resources for any ally. It just makes sense that he gets Steward of Gondor, so he now has three resources. So Vilya costs two, it's a ring, it's an artifact, it can only go on Elrond, and then he gains the Spirit Resource icon. And then you can exhaust Vilya and Elrond to discard the top card of your deck, and then you can put that card into play. If you cannot, you need to put that card on the bottom of your deck. So that is why Stargazer is so great, because I can make sure the top card of my deck is a card that I want Vilya to put into play. This deck I built allows me to do blind Vilyas, because I don't have duplicates of any of the uniques except for Vilya itself, and then another attachment that can go on Elrond. So even without Stargazer, most likely when you do Vilya, you're going to hit something that you're glad you put in play. All right, so let's exhaust Elrond and Vilya, and we're going to get Faramir. So Faramir, we knew, was on there thanks to Stargazer. So he's great, of course. He uh, can be exhausted and then give everybody plus one willpower. Uh, I do have those two resources on Elrond, so I'm going to put in my first chump blocker of the game. So Guard of the Citadel, don't get too comfortable there. You're about to be fed to uh, a Belrog. So, you know, no hard feelings. All right, time to commit to the quest. Four, six... I'm up against four, and we get the Goblin Swordsman. So he has one threat, and my threat is way below his, so I don't need to engage him, so I won't. I start to make some progress. Um, yeah, I can exhaust Faramir and add two more. So I do. All right, looking at my hand, uh, nothing I want to play right now. So we're just going to go into the combat phase. The Belrog is going to get a shadow card. He's attacking for 6 plus 3 because of the sword. So, you know, 9. So good luck defending that. Guard of the Citadel is going to jump in front of it. And the shadow is attacking enemy gets plus 1. Well, it might as well be plus 1 million because 
Uh, my guy was leaving, and that does ready Prince Immerhill, but I don't have um, enough attack to damage this Belrog anyway. And we should talk about Regenerate. So Regenerate heals an enemy by the specified amount, and it happens after you pass the first player token before you can take actions in the refresh phase. So he has Regenerate 3, plus 3 defense. So he, he's pretty beefy. All right, so uh, before I draw cards, I'm going to look with the Stargazer. All right, cool. So Light of Valinor, that's a card I definitely want. Here is how I have decided to organize my hand. There isn't really a good target for Vilia in that, but I have Daron's Runes. So take a look at what I got there and see if maybe you can figure out what my plan is based on those cards. All right, let's give everybody the resources. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're drawing Gleowine. Gleowine is going to come into play, going to cost two resources. I will then use Gleowine to draw a card. The card I draw is Light of Valinor, of course. Light of Valinor, you attach to a Noldor Sylvan, Sylvan hero, and the attached hero does not exhaust a quest. All right, I will now play Daron's Runes, draw two cards, and then discard a card. So I draw a Timely Aid and Hennemarth Riversong. I can now discard a card. I'm going to discard Master of the Forge. I've pretty much found my attachments that I need. Uh, that's the other thing, with only one Unexpected Courage, since I'm only using one core set, Master of the Forge can really help find that. All right, so now I'm gonna play Timely Aid, because the only card I know at this point is Gandalf. So I'm just hoping uh, there's another ally besides Gandalf, and boy is there ever. Um, I got Gildor and Glorian in my top five cards there. So Timely Aid lets you look at your top five cards, and then put one of those allies into play that you looked at, and then you shuffle everything back in. Ziggle Miner is also really good with the Stargazer, because you can arrange your deck, and he can discard the top two cards, and after you named a number, you could get resources if you discarded cards that cost the number you named. But I'm going to put in Gildor. Uh, you can exhaust Gildor, and then look at the top three cards of your deck, and then replace one of those cards with a card in your hand, and then put the cards back in any order you want. So, you know, this cycle added a lot of cards that let you manipulate your, your deck and kind of go through it and, and use it, search it. Um, makes it a lot more fun. I mean, when I was just playing with those core set cards, I was wishing I had more of these types of cards because they're, they're fun. It makes the game really fun. So, yeah. Light of Valinor, uh, that means Elrond is not going to have to exhaust to quest, so he'll be questing every round. And since I do have... Uh, unexpected Courage. I will eventually be able to use him like three times around, but I can't afford it yet, so I will play Hennemarth River Song. He lets you peek at the top card, and we're going to get this really goofy-looking goblin. He's just weird-looking. But anyway, uh, I got a deal of damage to a hero I control when he's revealed, and then after a character leaves play, he gets shuffled back in. So that, that's an easy effect to miss. So Hennemarth lets you peek at the top card. So now I know what I'm going to be questing against. Uh, knowledge is key, and so, uh, yeah, we're going to go into the quest phase. So let's send four. Elrond's being sent, five, six, seven. I'm going to reveal that goblin. I will deal a damage to Eowyn. I'll exhaust Faramir to add a couple more, and we do advance to the next quest stage. 2A is just flavor text. And then here we go, 2B, 16 quest points, forced. If at least one hero committed to the quest this round, place four progress on this quest card. And then uh, once you get to 16 progress, you advance to the next quest stage. Or if you somehow knock the Belrog down to zero hit points. He won't leave play, because he's indestructible, but you could place 27 damage on him. Since a hero was committed to the quest this round, I will place those four progress on the quest stage. All right, so I'm not going to engage any of the little enemies. Let's talk about how we're going to handle combat. So I have Gildor and Glorian ready, and I also haven't used Elrond and Vilya. So Gildor lets me look at the top three cards of my deck and rearrange them. I get to put one in hand, and I get to add one to the top of my deck. There's my Dunedain Watcher. So if I, as long as I survive combat without a Nasty Shadow this turn, uh, I'll have her in play next round to cancel a Nasty Shadow. So my top card is another Stargazer, and then the card I'm going to draw next turn is the Timely Aid that I swapped with the Gondorian Spearman. So I will use Elrond and Vilya, pop in the second Stargazer, I already have one in play. So I just don't need a shadow that makes me discard all my attachments, that's what I'm worried about. 
if I had to discard all my attachments, that would really slow me down. And I get... Uh, crap, I see the word discard. Discard an ally. Okay. Uh, shoot. If I had known I was going to have to discard an ally, I would have put the Gondorian Spearman into play. Because I, I can't lose both Stargazers. I like the card draw. I like Hanamarth. I guess it's Faramir. He only attacks for one. I don't need to worry about my willpower boosting effect on him or anything. So so when Faramir left play, I need to shuffle that guy back into the deck. And since shadow cards don't get discarded until the end of the combat phase, um, I don't need to shuffle in any cards because every card is in play that I've revealed so far. So shuffle that weirdo back in, discard the shadow, and we're going to go on to the next round. All right, we're at three hole threat. We're going to draw our timely aid. Everyone's going to get some money. We're going to peek with Hennemarth before we do anything just to see what we're up against. And oh, okay, here we go. So counter spell, really nasty. So basically it attaches to Dern's Bane. And then if we play an event, we have to discard the top card of the encounter deck. And if it's a treachery, we cancel the effect of the event. We then discard our entire hand and then we can discard counter spell from play. So, yep. Don't like that card, but love the art. Magali uh, was really on fire with that one. Alrighty, Glaywine draws me. Hey, it's a Dunedine Watcher. I knew that was coming. So I have resources to spend to put that into play. I also have a leadership resource still on Immerhill, so I can play Timely Aid. It's a good time to play it because I don't know any of my cards. Okay, a couple of Vilyas and a couple uh, expensive allies. I'm now trying to put allies into play that can attack. So I'm just trying to uh, get as much attack power on the board that I can because I'm going to try to whittle down Durin's Bane's hit points as much as possible. So let's put a Northern Tracker in. He attacks for two. We're going to give the deck a shuffle because Timely Aid, you look at the top five, put an ally in, and then shuffle the deck. There we go. Uh, there's my hand. I have Unexpected Courage and a Gondorian Spearman. Now we can use Stargazer to see what we're going to be up against. I drew one too many there. Alright, so we got two Ziggies. Ooh, we did get a uh, Miner of the Iron Hills. He discards Condition Attachments. So he can't discard the Sword, because that's a Weapon Attachment. But he could discard that Counter Spell when he comes into play. So after I commit Elrond to the quest, I'll be able to use Vilya, and I want to make sure whatever ally I put into play is one I don't mind feeding to a Belrog. So it's going to be one of these Ziggy Miners. And then next turn, I will draw the Miner of the Iron Hills and be able to Vilya in the Veteran of Nandahorian? I think that's how you say that. All right, questing for nine. Um against five that lets me make four progress then the quest card lets me make four more progress so I'm four progress away from advancing I should not have exhausted Elrond that's just a habit all right Vilya Elrond exhausting Elrond doesn't have to exhaust because of Light of Valinor and there's my Ziggy that comes in for free he's going to defend the shadow and the shadow is add the goblin swordsman to the staging area so be it he's dead that readies Prince Immerhill, and now I actually have enough to swing back, so might as well start damaging the Belrog. So once I add up all the attack, uh, it comes to a total of 8, and he has a defense of 3, so that means 5 goes through, and then in the refresh phase, because of Regenerate 3, he heals 3 of that 5 damage. So when it's all said and done, he took 2 damage going into the next round. Everybody readies, we're going to draw a card. And, of course, we know it's the Miner of the Iron Hills, which is great. I'll be able to get rid of the counter spell. So looking at my hand, definitely want to get that Unexpected Courage into play, finally. Eowyn can pay for that. Thank you, Eowyn. Here comes the Miner of the Iron Hills, thanks to Elrond. That will get rid of counter spell, so now I can play events again without having to worry about discarding my hand, which wasn't a big deal, but... the. Canceling the effective event is pretty nasty. All right, let's see what we're going to be up against. And it's just a one threat enemy. No problem. I'm just going to keep questing over all these guys. With uh, my threat being so low, I never have to engage them. 
All right, so we will exhaust Elrond and Vilya and then pop Elrond right back up with unexpected courage. And here comes that veteran of whatever it is. And he enters play with one damage, but he attacks for three, which is really great. So I'm going to really be able to start wailing on this guy. Gleowine draws me, draws me a card, and it's that Erebor Hammersmith. Okay, so if I ever do have to lose all my attachments, I shouldn't have to because of the Dunedain Watcher, but if I ever do, um, I can play the Hammersmith and get it back into hand. Alrighty, so I'm going to be up against 7 threat. With just my heroes, Elrond not exhausting, I'm sending 9, which is great. So the quest card says if you sent a hero, place 4 progress. I only needed 4. So we're good there. And we're going to advance to stage 3. And this one, I want to talk about this quest card for a second. It has one quest point. When revealed, Durin's Bane is going to make an immediate attack against me. Then we add the Dark Pit to the staging area. Players cannot win the game if Durin's Bane is in play. If Durin's Bane leaves play by the effect on Dark Pit, the players have won the game. That has led to some interesting rules questions because it that's the win condition. So what's with that one progress needed? Uh, I, a ruling I saw said you don't need to make the progress, but then why is it there? So it's very confusing, so I'm just going to make the one progress. I'm not really 100% sure how you're supposed to play it, so I'm just going to make the one progress. All right, let's look at what Dark Pit says. It's 11 progress, but you don't actually want to clear it. Underground Dark, and then uh, while it's the active location, refresh action, exhaust X characters to a maximum of three, you control to discard the top X cards of your deck. If all discarded cards have a printed cost greater than the remaining hit points on Durin's Bane, you may discard Durin's Bane from play. So that is how we're going to win. We're going to whittle down his hit points, and then using Stargazer, we're going to make sure our top three cards of the deck have a printed cost higher than his remaining hit points. Okay, so he makes an immediate attack. I'm going to put the Miner of the Iron Hills in front of that, and the Shadow is uh, attacking enemy gets plus three, might as well be plus 300, and my Miner leaves play. That readies Prince Immerhill. And then we're going to get attacked in the combat phase. I don't have a great target for this attack. So it's going to be the Northern Tracker. But that's okay. Two attacks in one round. It's a little tricky sometimes. And we get... Hey, if it's during Bane, it gets plus three. Might as well be plus 3,000. Okay, Northern Tracker, see ya. And then we're going to swing back with everybody that's ready. It's a, it's a decent amount of attack I can muster up right here. Uh, it's a total of 11. So 8 goes through and then three of that eight will regenerate so he will carry over an additional five damage to the next round so he has seven out of 27 damage okay so now i can use stargazer before we go to the refresh phase Alrighty, so I'm so resourceful that costs four but it's secrecy three it gives you some extra money each round uh there's another vilia I just want to get attack power in, and I like having a second Dunedain Watcher. That's really nice. So I'm going to leave my hand like this. And now we're going to go into the next round. All right, I did all my beginning of the round things. Henemarth is going to peek after I draw my card. Uh, it's a Ziggy. Of course, I knew that. Henemarth peeks, and OK, it's the Mountain Roots. It's just a one threat location, no problem. So like I said, I'm going to make that one progress. Not 100% sure if I need it or not, but I'm going to. So let's get some cheap allies in play so I can handle Belrog attacks. Two two-cost allies. Elrond can pay for allies of any sphere. Eowyn helps pay for the Ziggy. And then Gleowine is going to draw me that other Dunedain Watcher. And I still have two resources on Immerhill and one on Elrond, so I can put him in play. Or her, sorry. I can put her in play as well. Uh, that is all of my resources. Three allies in one turn. Seems pretty good, and I still haven't used Vilya. So let's get a fourth one in there, and it's Haldir of Lorien. So, yeah, four allies in one turn. No encounter deck can keep up with that type of um, card economy where I'm throwing in that many allies in a single turn. Alrighty, so I'm going to be up against eight. Like I said, one progress is going to be needed. My heroes will... We'll be sending nine willpower. So that's going to give me my one progress. So there we go. Now I can travel to the dark pit. 
And I'm just going to wail on this Belrog until I get enough damage that I can trigger the Dark Pit's effect. So I will always be defending with the ally that only has one attack, if possible. But Gondorian Spearman is my ally this turn I'm defending with, which is great, because he does a damage as he's declared a defender. And Durin's Bane gets plus three attack, might as well be plus three million. Gondorian Spearman leaves play after doing that one damage. It's not bad, really. It's actually pretty good. Uh, that readies Immerhill, and then I can throw a lot of damage at the Belrog right now. So once all the allies have exhausted, it comes to a total of 15. 15 minus 3 defense is 12 damage going through. Three of that will regenerate. So we're going to add 9 more damage to the Belrog. So that's going to be a total of 17 damage, which means I just need 10 resources worth of cards on top of my deck. Uh, actually, I need one more than that. I need 11 resources worth of cards, because you need to have more printed hit points. So if I, as long as I have 11 resources worth of cards on the top of my deck, we're going to win this refresh phase. So after everybody readies and I raised my threat, let's exhaust Stargazer and take a peek at what we got. We're looking for 11. And we have a 4 plus a 4 plus a 3. Last time I checked, 8 plus 3 is 11. And there's 10 remaining hit points, so that will do it, and we'll be able to exhaust three characters, discard top three cards of the deck, and win the game. So there we go, 11 resources worth of cards on top of my deck. I'm going to exhaust three characters. Let's exhaust the dwarves if possible. So one dwarf, two dwarf, and then, oh, I don't know, Emerhill, sure. We're going to discard the top three cards. 11 like we knew and there is 10 hit points remaining so that is more so then the Belrog ah, falls into the dark pit and that is a victory all right everybody I hope you enjoyed that one that was really fun uh, I love this quest because you can play secrecy the whole time and I love the secrecy cards and secrecy just gets better the longer the game goes all righty so that's it for the Dwarro Delph cycle we are heading to the heirs of Numenor and the release cycle gets a little crazy because we start getting the Hobbit and the LOTR Saga deluxe boxes released in the middle of the Heirs of Numenor cycle. But I'm going to play the Heirs of Numenor with any cards that were available at that time, and then we'll go back and play the Hobbit. All right, everybody. Take care. Happy questing. Bye-bye.